I want to go a little bit deeper into, <coughs> excuse me, deeper into the paint that we use and why. Uh, it's in response to the last video that I posted where I showed you the close-up finish of the water-based Movac brand spray paint that we use on MDF. I had a few comments on that and I've had, I've had discussions on other forums about paint and Peter Millard's just commented asking which exact uh, Movac paint we use because we've communicated about uh, Ticarilla which I think is what you use Peter and I know many people speak highly of it. We chose not to go with Ticarilla but went with the Sayalac uh, sub brand of Movac um, for reasons I'm going to go into. So I'm going to I'm going to get on to showing you the specific um, codes and why uh, but I just thought I'd start uh, by backtracking to to our journey of painting going from from using a uh, a uh, hand rollered finish and decorators type products to then dabbling with spraying and and to, to what we've settled on for now. So I hope that will be of interest. I know there's other makers that are that are hand painting and wondering about spray. Uh, so this may be a bit rambling, but bear with me. So let's let's begin just looking at what we started using. Now we used to swear by um, these mini foam rollers. We would always go for the fit for the job brand, actually a very cheap brand, but we found that because the foam was less dense than the more expensive ones, it held more paint and we could we could apply it faster with an acceptable finish. And the primer that we used for years was, so it's got an alert there, uh, the primer that we used for years was the Leyland acrylic primer and the Leyland acrylic eggshell. And that was from trial and error of various products, and we found it was very quick drying. The, the primer was very thick, and so it filled the pores on the edge of the MDF. Um, I'm going to show you in a minute the sanding process. So it would fill the pores, and then we sand it back, and we'd get a good finish. And because the roll had finished left what you call an orange peel effect, that very slightly textured but evenly textured effect, that, that hid quite a lot of the graining of the MDF anyway. So we did that successfully for years, and then we we moved to Johnston's. To be honest, it was just slightly more expensive, and we felt like it was a slightly better product on that basis, and we could get it from the same supplier, but I think they're pretty much the same. Um, so yeah, Leyland and Johnston's. And then we we dabbled with spraying, and we started with this little uh, Erlex spray station. I remember the first job I did with that, thinking that this is taking me no it's no quicker than rollering because it was so underpowered it's a it's a turbine so underpowered I had to thin the paint so much and the process of applying it was really as long as a roller um, marginally better finish but we kind of for that phase I don't know three years ago maybe I thought well what's the point in going to spraying because we're applying it quick enough um, it's working for us, we just lay all the boards out around the workshop and that was the other benefit, we could just put them all on the, on the workbenches. That was before this lean-to was built. So we'd just cover, cover the workbenches with boards, roller, 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 not worry about spray and extraction and it seemed to make sense. So fast forwarding from there, we, we eventually were persuaded that spraying did make sense and there's a very good forum with that title on Facebook which I recommend you you look up and we started spraying and we we used the Leyland's well the Johnston's products for a while and it was a step up in finish so we did become convinced that the finish was better it was flatter um, and we, we were using an airless spray system uh, which is up at the office I'll take you up there to see that at the end so the speed of application was quicker and the finish was better um, and yeah it made it made some sense uh, but then we realized that the paint really could be a lot better something we found with the Leyland and Johnston's was it's very sticky even when it's dry and even though it's fairly quick drying you can't stack boards together or they will stick and peel off and a few times we had issues where even after installation and if the customer maybe wiped it clean, it just always felt a little bit soft and tacky. So we experimented with different paints. Um, we contacted Morals, but they seemed to go quiet on us when we talked about water-based. So we had a preference for water-based, um, mainly to do with cleanup. 
that we didn't want to have all these chemicals to clean up. We then tried Ticarilla, having heard a lot of good things about them, and uh, as, as Peter's mentioned in that recent comment, they only do 10% and 30% sheen, uh, I think, and maybe, maybe higher sheen levels. But the samples we tried of the Helmi product just looked to me too plasticky. So it was either a little bit too shiny or a little bit too matte. So when we then met with a rep from Movac, everything they showed us and told us was, was very impressive, and they seemed very clued up on water-based paints. Um, and they they steered us towards uh, these particular products, which I'm about to show you. Sorry, this is typically me. This isn't particularly well planned. I've come in here because I wanted to show you the uh, the sanding process. I'm going to do that, and then I'll, I will show you the codes and the the paints we've got, the th paints that we use. Uh, so I, I know this will interest some people because this was another question off the recent video: is how do we prepare the edge of MDF? So we have always taken the approach of just sanding it smooth. So if you see this sample here, that near edge is pretty much just the cut edge. It's a little bit fluffy. That edge there has, has had a fairly good sand. And that's about as good of a sand as we always used to do when we were rollering. And we did that using these, they're called time shaver tools from America. They're really good sanding blocks and they, they're colour coded. They very easily unclip, uh, you see that little clip there. It's just, it's just a nice solid mechanism and it's got this rigid foam backer. So we would typically do 120 grit, then 180 grit and then we'd chamfer the edges. So we always put a little chamfer or round over on the edges and we used to always do that just with a block plane and then we moved to doing it with a chamfering bit in a palm router and then at some point we moved to doing it more with the orbital sander and it sort of takes a bit more skill to hold it flat and perpendicular on the edge but it's something you get used to and the ben one of the big benefits of that as we we're processing more and more MDF was the dust extraction so this Mirka Keros sander is linked into a dedicated extractor which is all we use that for and by using the, the Abronet mesh, it, it really does capture pretty much all the dust. So we would still do 120 grit, then 180 grit, sanding that way. And oh, just an, an in-between in option, by the way, is you can get a, an Abronet hand sander. So if you don't want to spend three, four hundred pounds on the Keros or Deros as it is now I think and the extractor you can get a Mirka hand sanding attachment that just plugs in to your extractor and you can get this kind of mesh for it. So where was I? That's, that's, that is still our process with the orbital um, but we I think we sometimes go to 240. Now Brady correct me I know you watch these Brady so do feel free to comment um, I think you might go to 240 grit um, because you don't get such a pore filling effect off the primer that we now use. So let's get on to the products we use. It's about time, isn't it? <clears throat> now, the reason Peter asked the question was, I think, Peter, you must have gone to the Movac website and, and found this quite intimidating list of water-based coatings which is one list of many lists on the Movac site. They do such a range of paints. I, I never saw that list. I just met with the rep and they said, these are the products for you. So primer, we buy this in 25 kilogram tubs. And here's the code. Pause the video if you like, write that down, look that up. Top coat, here's the code. The BB at the end means it's a plain white base, but you'll have the same code at the start with, I think, a different, well, maybe no number after it, I'm not sure, but you can, you can get it mixed, is the point, to any colour. So why these particular paints? They work well on MDF, 
And out of all the different options on the site, one of the very special things about them is they both can be used with an activator. So, so they, they're water-based, but they can be converted to two parts. I think the correct term is a cross-linker, uh, which, is, which is brilliant. So they're very quick drying on their own. They've always been quick enough for us, especially with the help of these infrared heaters that we, that we use. But in the cold weather, especially, you can help them to chemical cure by adding the cross-linkers. So if you're interested in doing that, the one that works with the primer is this code. And another benefit of that is it's, apart from speed up, speeding up hardening, it reduces the grain raising effect on MDF, which is a downside of any water-based product. Going back to the thick Leyland acrylic primer, one reason why we, we preferred that to any other water-based primer was it's so thick, it didn't seem to wet the MDF such that the grain would raise so much as other ones. Um, so you'd, you'd be able to get a relatively flat finish uh, straight off the first prime coat. The cross-linker that's used for the, uh, the top coat is this one, so the code uh, the code is that. And these only need a very small proportion, so you see that that's only 0.5 to 1% that's mixed in. We actually haven't used those much, even in the cold weather. Because um, another reason we, we liked water-based as opposed to the AC and pre-cat uh, paints, which I'm no expert on, but another reason we like water-based was we could leave the paint in the machine without, without it sort of curing and hardening and needing to be flushed out. And we will sometimes leave it in the machine uh, overnight and know we can just start spraying again in the morning. I mentioned grain raising. We've got a few things that are drying just here. And this, if you've been watching the channel, you may be interested to see this because this is one of the CNC manufactured doors. It's a, it's a drop down flap um, for a project that I showed you the designing of on SketchUp some time back. Uh, so this has had a primer coat or two. And I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a certain amount of texture, the, the raising of the grain. And this is a little worse than before because we've just had a Greco rep come to see us, a guy called Mark Smith, who was very helpful. And he helped us set up the machine better because we were having trouble getting... Let's just see if I can show you this. You can't see it. We were having trouble getting the right fan pattern. And we, we test the fan pattern on this bit of brown paper here that we pulled down. So when, when Brady's setting up the airless spray machine, he'll to just do a few squirts at that and see if he gets a nice blended oval. And he was really struggling to get rid of what are called the tails, which is these sort of concentrated bits of paint at top and bottom. And the solution was quite simple. We just needed to thin the paint a little bit, which we thought you didn't have to do on airless. So we started thinning the paint a bit more, but we have found that that means that the added water content does raise the grain a little bit more. But if you, sa if you sand it back, which we do anyway, we denib it anyway, and then put your extra coats on, it's, it's okay. I'm just walking up here to show you the machine. Um, so I mentioned the, the underpowered Erlex turbine system that we had. Um, we really made a, a big leap then, once we decided to commit to spraying, to a fairly expensive bit of kit, which we've been in the habit of bringing up here because we didn't want it to freeze. So as long as it was freezing temperatures outside, we've just been wheeling it up here into the office to keep in, in the warmth. Now this is the Graco Finish Pro 2, no, Finish Pro 395 Mark II, I think it is. And the reason we spent getting on for three grand on this is it's got an onboard compressor, because we don't have a compressor, and it's just a very high powered self-contained machine. Now to give you a little bit of understanding of airless spray, because I was confused for ages. Um, this is, very confusingly, this is an air-assisted airless. So let's just leave off the air-assisted bit for a bit. 
airless means that it pumps up paint, which it does by this, this pump sitting in the tin of paint, sucks it up, puts it under extreme pressure, forces it through all this pipe work, and out through a very fine tip which attaches to the end of that gun. And the atomization, which creates your spray, is created purely by the pressure going through a very, very tiny hole. So it's airless. There's no, there's no air atomizing it. The air assist comes in where it's already coming through that tiny hole, it's atomized, and then you introduce, at the point of exit, you introduce a few jets of air. So the reason there's a compressor on board on that is it's then, it's then introducing that extra air at the end which helps to shape that fan as it comes out and gives you a bit more control and softens it. And so you get the benefit of speed of application and volume of application, which airless is really good for, and also transfer efficiency, which is the amount of paint that actually lands on the surface you want it to land on, combined with the air control. Um, so we, we took the plunge to get that kind of system and could have could have possibly been a bit better informed and have since then wondered if it was the best system but since getting mark smith the Graco rep out he he's really helped to see yeah this is this is a perfect bit of kit for us it just needed a bit of tweaking and we needed to use some slightly different tips um so i think i'll finish by showing you some other samples of the finish that we're getting with the with the sailac paints from Movac. So this piece at the bottom, I'm not sure how well that's focusing, that is primed um, and a little bit denibbed. The piece at the top, it's got a slightly different round over profile, but that is the top coat finish, which is the 15% sheen. Um, talking of sheen, they, they have more sheen variants from Movac than Ticarillo, I, I touched on that before. We find the 15% is perfect. It's just like the eggshell that we find customers like. It's not quite matte, but it's not shiny, which just isn't very popular at the moment. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. Apologies if it's been a bit rambling. Um, feel free to ask any other questions. Um, I'm just showing you around because I know people are often interested to see other people's workspaces. I decided to do this as one take because I wasn't going to upload a video this weekend uh, but this just makes it quick, very little editing. So uh, see you next time.